Hello everyone. Uh, for today's video tutorial, I'm gonna start over a new sensor that is AD5252, and uh, for that uh, we have to log into the website that is controleverything.com, and here we have to search on for this sensor as you can see on my screen. And let's see what we got for this sensor. And here it is. It's a digital potentiometer. It's a hundred K as you can see hundred thousand. Now these are some more prominent features of this potentiometer and the plus point is that you can purchase the sensor from here. Well for the interfacing part I will be taking care of the potentiometer AD5252 with a Resvit PI and a Python code is required for the purpose and let's go to resource tab and here comes the Python code sample. Now you can have the Python code sample as a zip file from this very site just like here and also you can have the code from github.com and the official repository there is control everything community now let's have a look over the hardware we need for this setup and let's proceed further well in the hardware setup uh, for the connections what do we require is this uh, Raspberry Pi which you are able to see on my screen and these are the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi Next, we require an I2C shield which you can see and it's available on the website controleverything.com. The real reason we are using this shield is to make easier connections with other I2C devices. So for that, gently place the I2C shield over the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and make a connection. Next, we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and for that we require a micro USB cable just like that and gently insert it over here, the power jack. And for the internet connection, there are two options. First of all, this here is an ethernet cable or a LAN cable. Now gently insert it over this ethernet jack and you are done with the connections part. Now for the other internet connection, we can also have a adapter, a wireless nano USB adapter, just like that. And you can have on the USB port. The next part is to bring our potentiometer that is AD5252 and here it is. And this here is a connecting cable. Now make the connection among the connecting cable and the sensor and make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and same rule has to be applied for the I2C shield. Now we are done with the connections part. The next part is to provide the code. So let's have it. Let's have a look over the interfacing code and for that we have first of all to log into github.com and then we have to check for the repository that is control everything community and then we have the sensor that is AD5252 and let's see what we got here in the Python code but before that instructions first as you can see we have to download and install SMBus library on the Raspberry Pi and this link will help, help us uh, specifically for the installation purpose of the SMBus library as you can see we have examples dependencies commands and installation process to be fulfilled after that as you can see we have to download the code onto the Pi and we have to run the code. This is the command for running the Python code. Note it down. Then get back to the Python code and it's a dot .py extension file. Now in the code as you can notice we have imported SMBus and time libraries and we have the address of the sensor that is 0x2c. Now in the writing section part we are going to send instruction for potential channel 0x01 and input resistance value is 0x80. Writing command is here. Then in the writing section part, second we are going to send the instruction for potential channel 10x03 and the input resistance value 0x80. The writing command is just here. And then we are going to read data back from the sensor. We are going to select the data from the sensor, reading data from the sensor address that is 0x101 probably. And then we have the conversion of the data which as you can see we have used a formula which was clearly mentioned in the data sheet for AD5252. Similarly, we are reading data from the register 0x03 and here comes the conversion part of that data and at the very end we have the output data to be displayed onto the screen which is exactly the resistance channel 0 and resistance channel 1. So this is how a Python code looks like for this sensor. The next step is to have a look over the practicality, the working of this sensor and the code. Now coming to the working part and here first of all we need to copy the entire code as you are able to see on my screen and after that we need to open up the terminal for the Raspberry Pi and here we need to create a new file dot py will be the extension and here we need to paste the entire code and after that we need to save it and this command will run the entire code 
as on my screen and when I run it the resistance channel 0 will be 5.00 kilo ohm and again for the resistance channel 1 it will be the same 5.00 kilo ohm again when I run it the resistance among the channel 0 and 1 will be 5.00 kilo ohm and when I measure the resistance among the channel it is the resistance among the channel 0 and the terminals W and A when I measure using the multimeter digital multimeter and it is the value which is coming on to the screen of the multimeter which is exactly the same value for the resistance channel 0 and similarly when we measure for the channel 1 it is the same value across the resistance for the terminals W and A so it works now let's have a look over the working and some of the benefits the AD5252 is a dual channel I2C non-volatile memory digital control potentiometer with 256 positions this device performs the same electronic adjustment functions as mechanical potentiometers, trimmers and variable resistors. The part's versatile programmability allows multiple modes of operation including reading, writing access in the RD, AC and double E, MEM resistors, increment, decrement of resistance, resistance changes in plus minus 6 dB scales, Viper setting readback and extra double E MEM for storing user defined information. Due to these features, it is really applicable for a lot of applications like mechanical potentiometer replacement, LCD panel VCOM adjustment, white LED brightness adjustment, RF base station power amp bias control, programmable voltage to current conversion, and a lot more to mention. Well, you can have this sensor and you can purchase it from controleverything.com and you can get the code from resource tab. From this site, you can download the code as zip file. Also, you can get the code from github.com and the repository there is Control Everything Community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that if you have any doubt regarding any part of this sensor or video, you can have your queries on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page on this website. For articles and blogs, you can have a look over on instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over our YouTube channel. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot for watching.